You are watching The View from Hampton U. Exploring Hampton University's rich history, the past, present, and promising future. On today's show, Daquan Love hosted student perspectives on The View from Hampton U. We'll moderate a discussion on hot topics that affect college students. You're in for a treat. Welcome to Student Perspectives. I'm your host, Daquan Love. On this edition of Student Perspectives, we have with us Brooke Gordon and Lesla Gooding. And on today, we're going to be talking about HBCU Parent PLUS loans. Recently, there was an uproar when more than 14,000 HBCU students were denied Parent PLUS and PLUS loans by the United States Department of Education. This was due to a change in the application process that increased the credit history on the application from a six-month review to a five-year previous year review of credit history for prospective loan recipients. This change directly impacted HBCU students because HBCU students usually receive limited scholarships due to their smaller school endowments. Further, HBCU students are generally from low income and minority areas which primarily rely on scholarships and loans such as the Parent PLUS loan to repay their student tuition. So Lesla, how far do you think the credit history review should go back for students and parents who are trying to get loans to attend uh, institutions of higher education? Personally, I believe um, no more than a year. Um, five years is a pretty long time. So much I know in our economy has happened in five years. Many people have been laid off their jobs. Um, many parents had to, and students had to undergo the pressure of the economy and also the job loss. I don't think that's fair to punish someone for the problem of our economy and deny them of education. Um, the five years is pretty extreme um, because just think about we're in college for undergrad for four years and we all know how much happens you know there. So five years is a, is a lot to ask from six months, least a year the most. Okay. Well many at the United States Department of Education Brooke have mm -hmm. indicated that this Credit, applic credit review during the application process is actually intended to help minorities because they don't want the students to take out loans that they may not be able to repay, mm -hmm. which will cause further um, issues with credit history in the future. What are your thoughts, Brooke? Well, personally, because I think a lot of people rely on loans, I don't think it's fair for them to say that just because they might not be able to pay it back that they shouldn't receive the loans because they really don't know that. There's a possibility that more jobs are opening up because of Obama, and I think a lot of people will get jobs and will be able to pay those loans back. So do you think President Obama has a direct influence on uh, the students being able to repay their loans? Maybe not a direct influence, but I know in the future that there will be more job job openings for people just getting out of college. So I think that the market and the economy will boost soon. So I think that everybody should be able to get loans, especially because a lot of people rely on them. It's kind of not fair to say you can't get this loan. Well, some have also indicated that there should be more time for repayment of the loans mm -hmm. after graduating and that some of these loans should be replaced with scholarships or grants. Um, what do you, based off of your experience going through the application process mm -hmm. for these, uh, these loans, if you have, mm -hmm. um, what has been your experience? Well, I haven't had such a good experience, especially because my parents pay half out of pocket and the other half I have loans. So after I recently did my exit loan counseling, I'm like $40,000 in debt. So I do think that they, have should, they should have other options as well as we should have more time to repay them. So I definitely think we should get an extension. Any final thoughts, Leslie, on this? Um, actually, my experience is a little different. Um, I didn't qualify for um, loans, so my parents are paying out of pocket as well. I do have scholarships and grants, so I haven't had to experience that. I just know in regards to receiving like direct financial aid, I never, um, I was never allowed to have that, and I, I, that kind of goes back to like the middle class, how the middle class is um, the one kind of you know, carrying the bricks on their back, because I, I feel like I can really speak on that, because, you know, according to society, you don't financially qualify to get to receive all access to the possible opportunities 
Whereas, you know, you're not financially stable to, you know, pay everything out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the middle like that, I feel like it's, it's kind of like a pull and tug. And, you know, yeah. we all talk about it, but personally, I haven't seen any changes. And I was just blessed enough to have people in my life, you know, you know, grants or scholarships. But, you know, those scholarships only do so much. Mm -hmm. And we all know that um, the number you see at tuition is not the number you really pay. Um, you know, you right. off-campus housing, you're talking mm -hmm. about... A lot of miscellaneous expenses yes. Yes. get high. Yeah, they grocery really, shopping, gas money, all that, of that. really plays a part, and um, I don't think that's fair. And also, not to throw this, this is my personal opinion. Sure. I think it would be nice if the government, you know, somehow, some way, created a program for college students in regards to like even the smallest thing, like groceries. You know, mm -hmm. I would say most people like spend like maybe like a, I don't know the number, like a hundred on groceries mm -hmm. every, you know, once a month oh, or every yeah. three weeks. That would be you know amazing maybe not food stamps because I know some college students do use food stamps yeah. and um, you know technically you are paying for it already so to maybe have another program just geared for college students mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful. Definitely some sort of scholarship program to help out with other expenses that would be yeah, great. Yeah or like just an aid. Like, yeah. You, know, you may not have to. Have so enough. aside from the Pell Grant. Yes. yes. Aside yeah. from the Pell Grant. Mm -hmm. Now you brought up the question of food stamps do you think many college students are uh, eligible for food stamps or is there a stigma with food stamps? Um, I heard it was a stigma but I think as long as you're in college and you're unemployed I think you can get food stamps I don't think it's like a high qualification for it but I heard that it was a stigma in like certain jobs you have to like say you had food stamps and I know I heard that that kind of looks yeah. bad it yeah, not, so, to catch, not to catch yeah, you Yeah, no, it's okay. But yes, that, that, that brings up a great point because I have friends who um, who are food stamps, mm -hmm. not saying that they, you know, need it, them, but, yeah. you know, when you're unemployed and you're going to school, um, I think that, I think you have to be independent. You have to claim independency from your parents or you can't be claimed by any guardian mm -hmm. to qualify. And I think you also have to work amount of like eight hours and if you are working like a part-time job. Mm -hmm. But yes, I did realize like an uh, application I was applying for um, stated that, have you ever been on food stamps? Yeah. And um, I think I left the question blank one time. It, 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 I, it was brought up. I was like, oh, no, I haven't. You could just say, okay, great. That was a response. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So that, um, in my mind, I was like, okay, so, you you know, that doesn't look mm -hmm. good. That I possibly might have been on food stamps. That, right. like, that might have been a decision because I think there's, like you said, there's a reputation about being in food stamps, meaning that you are financially stable at one point in time where you need to search out, you mm -hmm. know, governmental aid. So I don't I don't know. That's why I said maybe not food stamps, but maybe like a separate mm -hmm. um, type of aid for just geared for mm -hmm. college students that is widely, um, I guess, it's accepted. Okay. Brooke and Leslie, you brought up some interesting points during this segment with regards to the Obama administration and the uh, credit history, and, and it seemed like you were pretty critical. Um, what, do you, what, do, what do you think that President Obama's administration can do to make it easier for uh, HBCU students to go to school and not to just go to school, but to stay in school um, and have the resources to be able to do so? Well, I definitely think that they should create more scholarship opportunities because, like you said, a lot of people that go to HBCUs are from low-income families or they need Scott, or they need loans, which means they're going to have to ultimately pay them back. So I think that if the Obama administration could create more scholarships for people, then that would cause, you know, students to not come out of school with so much debt and also give them an opportunity to go to school and stay in school because a lot of people's problem with not going to school is not having enough money. So I definitely think that if they could create more scholarships, it would increase the amount of students that attend college. We'll be right back with more from Student Perspectives. When I found out that I had prostate cancer, I thought it was the end of the world. My wife broke down and cried. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. Proton therapy made it a wonderful life. It really did. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Proton Therapy Institute at 877-251-6830. Great day to be alive. Hope that break wasn't too long, but we're back from The View from Hampton U with Student Perspectives. I'm your host, Daquan Love. We're here with Brooke and Lesla, and our next topic is dating in college. Our first question I'm going to ask Brooke, do women and men still go to college with the mindset of finding their mate? 
I don't think so anymore. I think that's a back in the day kind of notion, stereotype. I just don't think people do that anymore. I just don't. It's good though. If you find your husband here or your wife, you're definitely blessed because I know once you start a career, it's harder to find a mate. Definitely because you're not in just an area with thousands of people like you, you know. So I, I think, you know, you're lucky if you find one, but I don't think people do that anymore. What are your thoughts? I think with our parents' generation, the generations before us, they definitely, when they went off to college, they were told, you go to college, get an education, and you find your mate. Um, especially HBCUs, I think that's why um, most parents sent their children to HBCUs to be around other, you know, influential African Americans. But um, for our generation, because we're just kind of like the rebel generation, we're more of the independent, especially for females, more, you know, the African-American independent females like the new trend now so I feel like you know kind of like what Brooke said like if you find it awesome if you don't well you have you know the rest of your life to find them so so what do you what do you look for in a young man and do you see that personified in a Hampton man um, I look for honesty I look for someone who shows drive like I don't want anyone that just wants to be a nothing be a nobody so definitely honesty somebody with potential and drive and somebody that is loving and caring not too loving and caring like I don't want to feel like I'm dating another girl but you know just somebody that can show they care and not be so tough and manly all the time and since my boyfriend does go to Hampton then I definitely I can see those qualities in the Hampton man that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great that there's still hope. What are your what, what, what are your characteristics? I have a long list. Do you? Um, I do. Let's um, keep it short. <laughs> no, let's hear them all. Let's hear them all. <laughs> no, really, you don't hear. Um, well, one thing I've learned is that you both have to be equally yoked. Um, off, that means spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, like Brooke was saying, goal-wise. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the drive. But also, I feel like they need to also be your best friend. Mm -hmm. I think that's a major uh, factor that a lot of people do forget um, that the friendship is where it starts and then you know the attraction different things like that but definitely I want to have to say goal driven spiritual and must have that belief and spirituality that relationship with God definitely. Yes I forgot to add that you have to have even if you're not very religious you have to have a spiritual relationship with God you have to believe in God or be a Christian, I'm sorry to say, no, but I have to a marry a Christian. I'm yeah. sorry, but yeah. Yes. Man. yes. yes. But, but and, and you see a lot of that personified in the young men on Hampton's Oh, campus. definitely, because I think a lot of people that attend Hampton come from good backgrounds. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were raised in the church or mm -hmm. come from private schools or just, you know, from good neighborhoods. So I definitely think that Hampton men exemplify a good example. That's good. I have to definitely agree. Oh, sorry, I definitely have to agree on that. Um, I think, you know, right now everyone's young. Um, you know, and as you know, males tend to not mature as fast as females. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, right now everyone's in their 20, 21, 22 type range. So I think by the time they hit 25, I think they're going to be great. Right now, just immature, but that's. That's normal and predictable. That's normal. Though. Most They'll definitely. grow up. Yeah. Many students find that their personal budgeting and finance habits are formed during their college years. What have been your personal finance and budgeting best practices so far in college? What, what has helped you to keep, keep that account in the positive? <laughs> well, I've had a lot of budgeting experience, and I have to say that Throughout the years, I've gotten better. Like, as soon as my parents would put money in my account, maybe my freshman year, I'd go shopping, I'd buy food, I'd be like, forget the calf, I'm going to Chick-fil-A, I'm going to Subway, Panera Bread, no. It's okay to buy maybe one thing that you've really wanted since the last time your parents sent you money. Like, if you really wanted that video game, it's okay. That'll make you feel better, and that'll help you get through the weeks, get through college. Like, okay, I'm broke now, but I, my bills are paid. I have groceries, I have gas, and I have that one shirt I really wanted from my favorite website. Only if you can afford it, right? Only if you can okay. afford it, and then make sure you still have money left over. Mm -hmm. That's it. What, what about yourself? I have to really agree with that because I went through the same 
encompassing experience, um, especially living off campus. But to my freshmen coming in, um, it's definitely different, you know, when you're at home or if you're, you are working at home as well, you may not have time to work at, um, at school. Definitely. It's definitely a different experience. You know, sometimes you need just go to the cafe. You can find something in the cafe that you enjoy instead of going to Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. And save your money. You know, you don't need to buy everything. You may want to go to a party. You may mm -hmm. want to go out sometimes. Really try to not spend as much as what I can really tell you. That's the best advice I can give. Um, really watch. And I know that like, there's apps out there on your phone. Everyone mm -hmm. has the um, mobile banking. Mm -hmm. So you can watch your transactions. And yes. you can budget. I know there was an app, um, I think it's called Mint. Yes. And it, it helps it, you um, budget. And I think that will be a great help. But, you know, maybe like, okay, Definitely. this much, let's say you're getting $50 a week. Okay, you know what? I'm going to save $25 and then the the other $25, um, that's how I'm going to spend out during the week. So did your parents set up any type of rules or did you establish a relationship? One of the things that studies and researchers have found is that parents and students who initially uh, at the beginning set up clear rules and boundaries mm -hmm. um, as far as their financial relationship when entering college, um, those students have been more successful with budgeting. For example, a student um, and, and a parent relationship, whereas mm -hmm. the parent uh, or the, the parents indicate that they will only give a certain amount on mm -hmm. this day of each month mm -hmm. and no more, no less, no matter how important it is or mm -hmm. uh, how worthwhile the project it is um, versus some parents who may, uh, every time the student calls, the child mm -hmm. calls, they'll, you know, deposit 30 here or $100 mm -hmm. into their, their bank account. Which method do you think works well, best? Well, I definitely think the method that you talked about first is the best. Mm -hmm. I never heard of that method. If I would have, I would have suggested that to my parents. But instead, I kind of just call when I need it and just tell them the amount and they help me to the best ability. I do have a job, so I can take care of some of my bills on my own, but that is a definitely a good method and I think that more college students and parents of college students should practice that method because I think that would be worthwhile. I think that would help in students spending and budgeting. That would help. My parents did have that discussion with me about the spending. Um, they told me this is how much you have for the week and this is how much you're going to be getting. Um, especially that kind of came into play when I moved off campus. So I know that definitely helped me a lot. Um, and I'm a daddy's girl, so he had that conversation with me before, I want to say even before I came to college. So that kind of, it wasn't like a big drastic change for me. But um, the course is also, it's, it's nice to hear the theory and coming from someone else other than your parents or your guardians. So when I came to college, I did take the personal finance class. I was like, okay, well, they, you know, they weren't just, you know, trying to control me. They were actually mm -hmm. had some type of basis behind it because here, mm -hmm. as a, pro a professor who has nothing, who knows nothing about me, is telling me the same exact thing. So having those classes, it was, it was a real life experience um, for me because like, okay, my parents might have been right this whole time. So I think they're definitely mm -hmm. important, and I do think the University 101 class should definitely stay as a requirement for everyone. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Brooke and Lesla. This has been a very riveting discussion here on The View from Hampton U. We can't wait to see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Daquan Love. Next up, faculty and student profiles from Hampton University's finest. The View from Hampton U bringing you in-depth interviews, cutting-edge research, amazing sports highlights, faculty and student profiles, and much more. I'm Stephanie Sutton. And I'm Joseph Walters. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The View from Hampton U. I'm Teresa Kirchner. I'm an Associate Professor of Management at Hampton University and entering my 10th year here. I'm a triple graduate of Old Dominion University with an undergrad degree in Information Systems, an MBA with a concentration in Accounting, and a PhD with a concentration in Marketing. As I was finishing up my PhD, I got a call from the Chair of the Marketing Department here at Hampton University 
telling me that he'd heard about me and offering me a position as an assistant professor of marketing here at Hampton University. My business career began as a computer operator at Thomas J. Lipton, Lipton T. out in Suffolk, Virginia. And one day the plant manager came to me and asked if I could produce some quality control and production reports for him. And I knew what the right answer was, it was yes. At the time I was taking a computer science class, um, including programming at Old Dominion University, so I told him yes. And at the time I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I knew that I could. And so he gave me six months to develop them. And at the end of that time, headquarters was so impressed that they had me implement those programs at all of the tea bag production plants throughout the United States. From there, I went to Bank of America, who basically doubled my salary to have me come in and work on the same kind of system that I was working on at Lipton. And I started with Bank of America as an assistant vice president, worked my way up to senior vice president, managing a worldwide business continuity operation for them, for all of Bank of America's consumer and commercial bank. In addition to teaching and research, I also serve on boards of nonprofit and professional organizations, and I also do pro bono consulting work for nonprofit organizations. In particular, I help nonprofit boards with their strategic management, marketing, and planning. I believe that it's very important for business professors to have practical business experience, and mine has been very helpful in the classroom. And I'm looking forward to my 10th year here at Hampton University. Hi, my name is Lauren Pryor. I'm a sophomore psychology major from Gloucester, Virginia. I chose Hampton University because it was close to home. My aunt is an alumni of Hampton and she had all good things to say about it. I wanted to choose an HBCU and ever since I've been here, I felt like I was a part of a big family. I heard about the Wale Scholarship over the radio. Um, to get the scholarship, you had to be the 14th caller into the radio station at a certain time period. So when that time came, I kept calling the radio station. I called about 17 times and my phone call got declined and when I was about to hang up the phone, someone answered and told me that I had was one of the 14 nationwide to be chosen and running for the Wale Scholarship. Out of 14 nationwide, three were chosen to fly to New York to meet Wale at his album release party and of course I was one of them. The scholarship helped me up as a college student because attending college is difficult. Um, it took a big financial stress off of me and my family and it cut back on one less loan that I had to take out to afford to go to college. In five years, I see myself in graduate school um, studying neuroscience, so hopefully I can become a cognitive neuropsychologist, and I'll basically be studying memory and diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. And thanks to the Wale Scholarship, I'll be able to continue my education here at Hampton University. Join us next week when Keith Thorogood, founder of Wolfgate Clothiers, teaches HU students about dressing for success. We'll see you then. Proton therapy was much easier than what I was expecting. I thought surely I would have some side effects. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. And I had no side effects whatsoever. So it was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute today. Did you know political analyst and commentator Jamal Simmons shared his thoughts and advised students on preparing for the post-Obama era and your future when he visited Hampton University's campus in April? His visit was made possible by the Center for Public Policy, where research, theory, and practical applications help to shape public policy for Virginians. And now you know. Join us next week for another exciting episode of The View from Hampton News.